bit awkward when you walk in. And I had a really good time. Hi. Tonight's guest is rarely up at this hour, so we're really lucky to have him here tonight. Uh, his name is synonymous with the landscape of Montreal. He's, uh, well, he's chock full of conviction, integrity, and rock. And, uh, well, you know, he was lured away once from Montreal, but we reeled him back, and right now he's Montreal's number one morning man. Everybody, this is Terry DeMonte. <laughs> place you have here. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having Pretty me. Pretty cool. Have you met Tony Ezzi before? Hi, Tony. I just meet him now. I love the outfit. Very Thank nice. You. Very, very nice. Yeah, yeah. He stole it from Prince. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a nice, it's a nice outfit. I'm and, pretty and, happy. That, and that's your own chest here, I'm assuming? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Very good. Okay. All right. <laughs> Great. Do you, Super. Do, you, do you get up to the mile end very often? Um, I, I try not to because I have a car right? and everybody knows, uh, we don't want cars in the mile end. It's so true. It's true. We, we I drive an evil you. automobile. So, uh, no, that's not true. I, I mean, I, I try, I mean, it's, I was just, as a matter of fact, a friend is in, uh, a t TV producer friend of mine is in from Toronto mm -hmm. and he dropped me off here and he said, what's this neighborhood? He said, this is a great neighborhood. I said, this is a mile end. And yeah. started telling the history of, you know, for what was Jewish and then was Greek and you know, that whole history, and it's, uh, you know, as you know, full of great restaurants, and it's the land of Diddy Kravitz and Walensky's, and... It is that, you know? and, and slush. And, and slush, uh, <laughs> yeah. But there, it's hard to get a good drink around here, though, still. Is it really? Yeah, because every bar has, like, a theme now. It's like, oh, really? play ping pong and have a drink. No, 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 no. There's no taverns. There's no more taverns. Yeah, drinking to me, I don't know about you, but drinking to me is social. It's social. Right? You want to s sit around and shoot the breeze with the guys or whoever you're with. Ideally, I want to get a, a, a little depressed too, <laughs> a little low, a little low. I like the I, I like the idea of a drink, and uh, I don't know. Maybe it's a reflection of the fact I'm not 35 anymore, but mm -hmm. I like to have a conversation as opposed to yelling at each yeah, other. Yeah, no, that's important. Yeah. yeah. How old were you when you started at Showman? 84. Uh, I was 26 when I got. Wow. Yeah, I was 26 when I got the morning show, and I I'd never. Uh, I'd never done the morning show. I'd never done a morning show before, and I, I, you know, I'd filled in for the guy that I worked with in Winnipeg because I got my start in Manitoba. And mm -hmm. so when when Shom called, I, I, you know, I said to Rob Braid, who was running the joint at the time, and who I I owe a lot to because he was a great, you know, had I worked for anybody else, it, he wouldn't have let. Rob let me find my way mm -hmm. as a. Well, you were a, a young kid. I like, was. I was like, twenty six. Man, it's crazy. I know, it was crazy, and I. And I, um, I said to him, I said, look, I, I'm not sure I know how to do this. And he said, that's okay. You know, we, we got a lot of growing to do. I think Shom was really struggling at the time. They were trying to refine their identity, having come out of the 70s, and it was 1984, and they weren't sure which direction they were going in. Anyway. Out of the drug years, out of that Yeah, out of, the, out of that sort of long hair, albums playing, and beads for curtains, you know. It, <laughs> right. It, I mean, it, it, it had its roots in you know the sort of hippie era of the 1970s so so how has the role of the the morning man dj changed over all these years well i mean when show started it was more of a uh, but you, more for you you know since you oh came well in. i mean i i think you know i the role of the morning guy i think stays the same i mean mm -hmm. they I've always said good radio stations are like good hockey teams. You need a good general manager, you need a good coach, you need a strong first and second line, you need a good goaltender, okay. right? And to me, uh, the morning man is the goaltender because everything flows out from the morning show. Mm -hmm. If your morning show doesn't do well, the rest of the day can struggle. I mean, that's an old traditional way of thinking, Makes but I think for the lar by, by and large it's true. And if you look at successful radio stations, uh, whether they're in the States or Toronto or here in, in Montreal. Uh, you know, the stations when I was growing up, when I was a kid, um, you know, we listened to AM radio at the time, and the two big guys were George Balkan and Ralph Lockwood. And we all listened to Ralph Lockwood as kids, and our parents listened to George Balkan. And, and George was, you know, a 30-year-long-time veteran, 
And he anchored that station, and both those stations did well, be, I think, by and large, because they set up the day well for the rest of the day. So I, I, I don't think that's changed. Mm -hmm. I don't think well, it's changed. Well, but, you, you know, you had an edge on him. You were on TV a couple well, times. <laughs> a couple of times. I was on TV a couple of times, yeah. You were on Fighting Back. Yes. Fighting Back, amazing. Yep. Yes. You you broke a crack story before we even knew what crack was. <laughs> we didn't even know. And I, you know what? I have to tell you something. Uh, what, tell and, me. And this is important. There was a big crew of people that worked on Fighting Back. I mean, sure. a lot of, a lot of people thought it was you know just me chasing down these. No, you were the ringleader, really. I was. I was yeah. the ringmaster. But we had a lot of great producers and reporters that tracked these kinds of stories down, and I had a ball. And it was back when. Uh, television was um, involved with local programming, you know? Yeah. You turned on your local television station and you watched local television programs reflecting the city. I think that's exciting. I think it's going to come back. I hope it does. It has to. Like has I, to. I said to you in the green room, <coughs> the green room in the back there, it's, it's my, nice. It's my bedroom. It's nice. My, Terry DeMonte has been in my bedroom. <laughs> I can say that now. And uh, I was saying to you, <coughs> if you know, you had done what you're doing now, which is pretty spectacular. Uh, 25 years ago, you would already been on a major television station. Alas, alas. So it's just it's a it's just a question of time, Demetrius. Hang in there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm hanging in there, fighting with the skin <laughs> on my teeth. Um, but you had my dream job, which is to be uh, the host of a kids show. Yeah, yeah. Switchback, yeah. which. Tony grew up in northern Maine, and they had switchback. Are you kidding? We picked it up. We got it from Moncton. There was a feed from Moncton. No was kidding. A, see, with the rabbit ears. <laughs> wow. Wow. Wow, yeah, isn't that something? Yeah, my, my sentient memories of human speech. No kidding. Was, was, was switchback. Did you have a perm at the time? I did not. I, I there was I did a different not. host than That Halifax. was the host before me, I no, no, yeah. it was a different Oh, yeah, host. you were getting the Halifax feed. That's right. Okay, yeah. That's right. There were, there were regional switchbacks. So there mm -hmm. was a Maritime one, there was Quebec and Ontario, there was one for the Prairies and one in BC. Yeah. And uh, again, when they were spending a lot of money on... Same format, though. Yeah, yeah, same format, same show. And mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I only do television shows with the word back in it. <laughs> <laughs> so switchback yeah. and fighting back worked well. I had a ball on that show, Demetrius. Switchback? Yeah, I had a ball. It must have been crazy. I had that a gorilla ball. arm, right? Yeah, I had a ball on that show because... I cheat my life. That <laughs> did, oh, God. <laughs> all, over, all over the United States, they was watching that. That's show. unbelievable. Yeah. Um, it was a... Um, first of all, it was live. Yeah. Which was, I mean, today that's unheard of. We were live every Sunday morning. And um, it was pretty crazy because I was doing the morning show at Shom. Uh, and I would go out Friday night with my pals, and then Saturday I'd get in the car, drive to Ottawa. We would rehearse the show and block it out on Saturday afternoon and Saturday night. I'd go to sleep, get up at 6, go to the studio for 7, we'd go live at 9. We'd have a post-show meeting at, uh, uh, till 10 or 11 o'clock. I'd get in the car, drive back to Montreal, and get up the next morning and do the show morning wow, show man. all over again. You were the Krusty the Clown of Canada. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> I had smaller shoes, but I was Krusty the Clown. And because it was live, and because it was kids, and it was, you know, I got to interview a lot of cool people. We had a lot of fun. We yeah. played games. It, it was, I had a blast on that show. I really loved it. It was different. It, it, like, you could be an Anglophone back then in Montreal, <laughs> you know? You, you could be an Anglophone. Whereas now, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, you're a big star. You're pretty famous. No. Everybody knows you. I, I, th I don't think I'm a big star. I, I think there are vedettes in French. Right. Tipon Vedette? No. No? Uh, no one's going to pay to see you at the Pas comme les gars à Radio-Canada ou right. TVA. C'est pas la même chose, right? No. It's not the same thing. I mean, when you do this for a living, the byproduct of it is notoriety. Yeah. And uh, for sure, as you probably know now, <laughs> television is very powerful. It's a powerful medium. I remember it changed. Switchback was my first foray with television and it changed overnight. I did one show at Switchback as a reporter before I was the host. I was the Montreal reporter. Okay. Because the show was based in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. um, and I uh, did one piece for them on a Sunday. They, that sh the piece that we recorded aired on a Sunday and Tuesday kids were recognizing me. Wow. And it was, you know, I, I see kids looking at me and I think, what are you looking at? Take a picture. Because I wasn't used to it. Wasn't used to the recognition that television brings. Wow, wow. Well, I, I remember there was a kid in my class who's, who, who is a, Ricky Oss. 
Ricky, Ricky J. Oz. Ricky J. He was a music. He was a musician. He Is did he? A do the hustle thing. Anyways. Okay. I, I the reason I, I said when you said Oz because my high school principal was named Oz. Really? Yeah. No, no connection. Okay. I don't even think Ricky finished high school. Okay. All right. I don't even think he finished. <laughs> high no, I didn't think he was. Maybe his dad was the principal. I don't know. Oh anyway. God, no. Oh no. Oh, no. Okay. Oh God, no. No, but he was showing off. I remember you came back on a Monday. I was like, I was on fucking switchback. He didn't say fuck. To he be was honest, on, was he, was, he, he was really young. Was he on my switchback? Yeah, he really? was. On, he drove to Ottawa with his mother. He yeah. made his mother drive to Ottawa to be on switchback. I, I, you're okay. I did. It's okay if I swear that. Oh, no one pays us to do it to stop us. Okay, that's great. All right. Okay. Why do you want to swear? You want no, to swear? No, 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 no. I just, something? you know, when you said fuck no. I thought, oh God, we're on television. You're not allowed well, to. Well, relax. <laughs> relax. You're on there. How do you relax, anyways? Like that is something I wanted to ask you. Like, you know, you wake up at four a.m. Yeah. You don't go out late. That's for sure. No, I, well, I used to. I mean, I, you know, when I was in my twenties, I I could get away with that. I can't get away with that anymore. That, that was seventy years ago, Terry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we're talking about today. Yeah. You, you're you're fitter. You're eating better. You're not going to Schwartz anymore. Look at me. Do I look fit? You you look fitter <laughs> than you did in the eighties. That's true. You you're correct about that. Yeah, you're correct about that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you you did have a bit of a Great Antonio kind of like pulling yeah. buses look yeah, in the I 80s. Did, yeah. You were strong, strong man. Yeah, I was just really fat is what I was. <laughs> I've gained a lot of weight too. Since well, I you know what? I mean, part of it is uh, part of it is my Italian background. Mm -hmm. uh, part of it is my love of food, mm -hmm. and uh, part of it is uh, the hours. The hours they kill you. I go to the gym on Tuesday and Thursday. I went to the gym today, and I hate every minute of it, every single minute of it. But it's the only thing that's going to help keep me alive because when you're up at when when you're up at four, mm. everything goes out of whack. Yeah. Like you know we're like tomorrow on the show, the Banquis, the famous poutine sure, place sure, that sure. everybody knows, uh, they've bought advertising time at show. Okay. So tomorrow they're coming in with poutine at around seven thirty. In the morning. That's what everybody says. Everybody goes, seven thirty in the morning. You can't. You're not going to eat poutine at seven thirty in the morning. Not only am I going to have Putsin at 7.30, <laughs> Bill Zaharku is bringing in champagne at, at 10 to 8. Whoa. And when you think about it, when you get up at 4. Yeah, that's breakfast. 7.30 7 is closer to lunch. Fair enough. Right? If you get, up, if you get up at 7 mm -hmm. and you have a coffee break at like 10.30. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of the... My whole life's a coffee break. Is it really? That's how it feels. Sounds that's like you lead a termed life. It's awful, Terry! I'm, do I'm doing terrible! Listen, I'm going to ask you your advice. I'm going to take a break. Okay. Yep. Right. I'm going to be right back. Okay, great. And we're going to play a game, actually. Oh, we're no. Play a game. Okay. Okay. <laughs> The Duracell batteries we make now live longer than the ones from a few years back. Today's Duracell lasts up to 30% longer. A recent taste test proved that Diet 7-Up tastes better than the other leading diet drinks. Here, let me help you with this. This news may dramatically increase demand. Here you are, man. Oh, thank you. Unfortunately, to avoid a shortage of Diet 7-Up, people who may not really need it may be asked to limit their purchase. Only one taste feels so good. Diet 7-Up. And we're back. So, Terry, uh, you're a rock guy. What are, you know, you recently did something on show from some overrated bands. You are talking yes. about overrated yeah. bands. Who, who do you, I don't want to get, usually I'm very negative, but with you, I want to hear. Why are you negative? What's to be negative about I'm having a tough time. Come on. I'm having a tough time. I, you know? I sense there's a passion. I care about Montreal. Yeah, but I, I think you're passionate about what you're doing. Sure. And out of passion grows all good. Ah, uh, so, yes. And you have to be patient. Oh, absolutely. You have to be patient and you cannot give up. Oh, God. You sound like my therapist. <laughs> you, wait a minute. The rent isn't paid and you have a therapist? Absolutely. I won't. I, that's one thing that's I one thing won't, you won't give up. No way. No way. I love Michael. I love Michael. Psychodynamic. Um, actually, I know your uh, producer, actually, Esteban Vargas. Yeah. Part Ewok, part man. <laughs> Does he do a good job? He's very, very talented, and we can't do the show without him. And he's I'm not, a young guy, too. He is a very young guy, and speaking of passion, he's a very, very passionate guy. He's very organized. That, that's an important part of a, of a morning show. You need mm. to be able to rely on somebody, because when you're doing things 
you know, live and in the moment, you need to be able to look at each other and just shoot each other a look and, and, and I need him to come up with stuff quick. He's very, very good at what he does. What's the look you shoot at when it's time to go into a rock ride? Um, What's this, one of these? It's, it's just a wave of the hand. <laughs> <laughs> a wave of well, because the rock ride is boring for me, right? <laughs> right. Because I, I mean, 30 I'm minutes. Just, it's, everything is on computer, records are firing automatically, yeah. and I'm just sitting there. Do you choose the music? Uh, I have influence on the music. Music you is do. A, yeah, music is all chosen now by um, a computer. And there's computer models, and you get a computer printout. But uh, in conjunction with my program director, because I've been doing what I've been doing so long, sure, um, I want to have a say. And there, there are some... I'm from a, a school of... Um, I've, I've had many arguments with program directors over the years because I believe in things like Monday records and Friday records, mm -hmm. sunny records and rainy records. I couldn't agree more. Right, Music is all about mood. Sure. Right? You don't want to play working for the weekend on a Monday morning. <laughs> no, right? definitely not. I, it doesn't fit. When do it you play just... Mata Hoople? Does that ever fit in? Does anyone Sometimes. ever... <laughs> all the young dudes? Yeah. yeah. Like, does anyone ever call in? Like, all the young dudes, Terry! Yeah, we still get requests for that kind of thing. Yeah. You, you don't want to play Riders on the Storm Oof. on a f sunny Friday afternoon, long weekend kickoff in May. So what you know mode what I mean? you play? No, I totally know what so you mean. So I want to have some influence to look at the sheet and say, ça, ça marche pas for this, the, the, re this record this morning. You know, I'm going to drop that one because it doesn't fit. Well, at least you don't take requests in the morning. During the morning, so there's I, no time. I, I mean, I try, and we do we do try and play one or two uh, once in a while when we have time. But the morning show moves so quickly, it's very, very yeah. difficult to do. And, you know, there have been other mornings. I've been on the air the morning after the Dawson shooting, the morning after the Polytechnique mm. shooting. You know, the music sheets, out the window. Right. Do you still play? Did you still play music those days? We did, but we did. The, the the music had to have a certain kind of tone. Sure, right? John Lennon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go dark. Yeah, well, you know, be appropriate with the mood. Yeah, take it right? serious. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, um, okay. So I'm pretty excited. Okay. Uh, I I I prepared a game in can, the spirit. Can I just ask you something? Yes. Where did you? I love this. You love Where it. Where did you get this? I got this. Uh, I got got this in Toronto, and it's a Japanese artist. And uh, I'd give it to it's, you, but I don't no, have no, another no, one. No, 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 no. Because it's. I'm so, gonna send you a link. Number one, it, you've, it's so. I don't smoke. No. But it's so rare to find an ashtray anywhere today. True. When I saw David McMillan on here, yeah, the both of you were smoking up a storm. Oh, God bless. Thought him. I was gonna need a mask. God bless. Don't him. you love David McMillan? I love him. He's not he the best. I love him. He's the best. I I really believe that every person that lives in St. Henry yeah. should write him a handwritten note thanking him for raising the value of their fucking shitty condos. <laughs> Listen, he changed that the whole, yeah. not just that neighborhood. People used to say he changed that neighborhood. He changed the whole vibe of that section of the city. Yeah. His influence has now been felt on the other side of Atwater now. I think on the other side of the country even. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, he's world renowned, but I mean, sorry, I touched my mic. Sorry, guys. In terms, in terms of the, in terms of what he did for that particular neighborhood, which was all antique stores. Yeah. <laughs> like one after the and other. And Billy Little Burger. Yeah. Yeah. Which is still there. It's survived. Still there. Still there. Which David, I know David loves. But now, like, you you go up and down either direction and down towards the Atwater Market. And on the other side, there's Tuck Shop and a whole bunch of other restaurants. Yeah. He really revitalized that whole neighborhood. Yeah, you should get a cut. The guy's a fucking genius. Yeah, yeah. And, and a genuine cool guy. Knows what the fuck he's talking and about. S and warm and wonderful and kind and, and smart. creative. And yeah, he's all of those things. Anyway, I, I loved watching your episode with him. Oh, great. Thanks. It was our highest rated. Was it? 18 people watched it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. So... You know, um, because I really do think you always came up with great games, even back in the day with, Ter uh, with Ted Bird yeah, and all that shit. Yeah, we love fooling around. You love fooling around. Yeah. You love wasting absolutely. some company money. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I created a game that I don't think you would ever get away with on show. Okay. It's called Resurrection. <laughs> okay. We don't have a theme song for it. Okay. 
perfect. I, I like that. that. That's I like why that. I pay him in there bananas. You so I was going to ask you why you had so many bananas on the desk. Is that why? I'm going <laughs> to. It's for the gorilla hand. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> call back. <laughs> Excellent. He's such a pro. Bring him on. Bring him on the show. Um, OK, so the point of this game yep. is that what we're going to do is I'm going to name two people that are dead. OK. And I'm going to give you the power to resurrect one. Oh, what a cool idea. Bring me on, Terry. What a cool idea. So I'm going to give you a chance to resurrect one, but it's um, I will then tell you if you're right or wrong. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay so uh, we're going to ease in. Richard okay. Pryor or mm. Mother Teresa? Oh. If you can justify each one, I would accept that. Um, I would want to hear that. Richard Pryor. Correct. <laughs> that is the correct answer. Thank you. Because Mother Teresa was a liar. Pierre Elliott Trudeau. Yeah. Or Gandhi. Now this is tough for me. It's tough. It's a tough question. Because I am good friends with Justin. As you should be. I, I hope he's the next Prime Minister. Um, Even though he wouldn't agree to come on this so show. So <laughs> I'm going to go with Pierre. Correct answer. Is it? Yes, that is the correct answer. Because that's Justin's dad. And if I could do that for Justin, you know. oh, that's a nice thing. Well, I, I was just thinking he'd stir shit up. <laughs> <laughs> he'd make a mess, and I could smell it, and it would be great. Yeah, he loves to make a mess. Oh, I that's love yeah. making a mess. Yeah. That guy, I love that. Okay, okay. So, uh, slightly tougher question. Okay. Johnny Cash. This is a great game, by the way. This is this would make a great. This is a great game, like around a table with a bunch of wine. Oh yeah. Eh? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, sorry. So is Johnny... that an invitation? Uh, I'll work on I'm it. in. Okay. Johnny Cash? Uh, Johnny Cash or Kurt Cobain? Johnny Cash. Correct. You're doing very well. Am I? Yeah. You're doing I very, very, very well. I'm going to stump you at one point. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Oof. Tough. They're getting this harder. is the rock section. This harder. is the rock section okay. for you. Okay. Right. So Rick James or Joey Ramone? Joey Ramone. Correct answer. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. He, it's the correct answer. He disagrees. He disagrees. Uh, why? Why do you disagree? What do you dis don't you think? Don't you think? I mean, Joey. Joey had it rough. You know, Rick. Rick knew. Rick knew, Rick knew what he was doing. He was in Buffalo. Zero degrees below. <laughs> As a rock and roll guy, I have to go with a remote. Absolutely. Plus, they never made a dollar. At least give him back his life. Okay. <laughs> give him back his life. Okay. Ooh, this one's tough. George Harrison or John Lennon? John Lennon. Incorrect. <laughs> Incorrect. And o only because I'm biased and I think um, I prefer the solo Harrison projects more than I prefer the Lennon project. It's completely up to me, by the way. Of course. It's completely arbitrary. Yeah, of course. I Here, two things. Yes. George Harrison, his death was a terrible, terrible loss. Yeah. He was taken by a terrible, terrible disease. Mm -hmm. Lennon was murdered. Ooh, he yeah, get, that's true. It, his life was stolen from him. So if that's I had true. the power, that's true. Besides the fact Lennon was the foundation of that band, you make a good point. And yet I'll come back with Yoko. Okay. <laughs> and I'll say you're still wrong. Okay, and let's move wrong. on. All right. And, okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. I feel I feel you're gonna get this one. Harry Nielsen or Robert Barassa? Um, this, oh, maybe it's a stumper. For well, you. as you know, as a Montrealer, I'm trying to I'm trying to think this through, because you know Barassa affected my life. Mm -hmm. And had we listened to Barassa mm -hmm. back in 1975, we wouldn't be in the shit we're in today. Still. What's the shit we're in today? We're, we're totally going long. I'm sorry, <laughs> producer. We're going long. Go ahead. Uh, What's the shit we're in? Because I agree, we're in shit. We never stop arguing about the goddamn language question. I feel like a second-class citizen. Well, you shouldn't. Really? Parlez-vous français? Oui, je parle français, mais j'écris pas. And I feel that language is best expressed in reading and writing. Okay. You know what I mean? Do you read? Yeah, I read yeah, and read okay, it a lot. Yeah. In, in English. I feel like I have to whisper it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Be a proud Anglophone. I am. Because the province isn't the province, and people forget this, and this pisses me off. Mm -hmm. The province isn't the province without the contributions of the English people, especially in the early 20th century. From the 1900s, from the 1900s towards the 1960s when the boat started to rock, yeah. a lot of the institutions that were built. The Molson family's been here longer than anybody else. <laughs> longer than the Indians. 
So, anyway. so what's your answer? So what's your answer? Uh, my answer is Nilsson. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> correct. <laughs> that is the correct answer. Okay, and um, this is the last one. Okay. Uh, Bowser or Blue? Oh, geez, that's not fair. I know Ricky and George really well. Um, but you agree they're dead. What? <laughs> no, I'm just... <laughs> um, it's generational. I never got it. I never got the humor. Listen, I, 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 I don't disagree with you that, I mean, it's, it's a, uh, it's, um, you know, the one thing that a lot of people don't know about Bowser and Blue is mm -hmm. George is a phenomenal guitarist and was with the original Super Trend. Really? Yes. Oh, no, I did not know that. A lot of people that. didn't know that. That is pretty cool. The original edition of Super Tramp, hmm. George was part of that. Wow. That's a hell of a... That's a show band, by the way. That yes, is the yes. ultimate Su show Super band. Tramp is an ultimate show band because those were the days when they, you know, the bands the, the bands on the radio station had, had a, a special relationship. Super Tramp, Christopher, Genesis. You know, it was, it was not uncommon to walk into show on Green Avenue. And see Peter Gabriel sitting in the lobby. Come on! I'm not. I'm not kidding you. Peter Gabriel. They would walk down. I'm not kidding you. They would walk down from the forum after sound check, and go in and chat with the boys. And a lot of them would just hang around. Wow. Yeah, it was a different era, a different time and place. Well, um, that's it for tonight. Thanks a lot, Terry. Listen, this really? was a lot of fun. Really? Yeah. Cool, I, huh? I'm so glad you 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 chased me down because it was a lot of fun. Yeah, you're a very difficult guy to get. Well, because you sleep, you have to sleep. I sleep and it, and it's like we're seven days away from Christmas, so I'm. That's true. I got a lot of juggling to do. No, no, know? we're really grateful. Thank you so Listen, much. Listen, I and I encourage you. Stick with this. Thanks, man. Because you're good at this. Okay, cool. That's a great game. We're going to play more games. Have me on. I'll make up all okay. kinds of games. All I right. hope you like spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away, padded shaper. Uh -huh. Good night, everybody. Oh. And I get a, a, banana. a parting banana. My slogan uh. is have it when you get there. <laughs> parting gifts. Who do? Oh, that was awesome. Thank you so much. That's great. It was a lot of fun. Very cool, man. That was a lot of fun.